In ProPresenter 7.5, we have brand new ways to edit and control our presentations that I think you're gonna love. And so let's look at how we can fully take advantage of all of these great new features. The first thing that you'll notice is the brand new show controls that we have underneath our preview area where we can control audio playlists, our stage screens, timers, messages, and props. And not only can we trigger these items and add new ones and edit these items, but we can also use our show controls to help us quickly build our presentations. And so what does that look like? Well, I have this pre-service playlist here and I want it to automatically be uh, triggered with my announcement loop. So I can simply drag this pre-service playlist to the first slide of my announcement loop. And you'll see it's added an audio playlist action to this slide. So now when I click on this welcome slide, it's gonna start my announcement loop, which is set to auto advance every five seconds and it started my audio playlist down here. Now the best part is that uh, by default, when you add a audio playlist action to a slide, if it gets triggered multiple times, it allows that playlist to continue. It doesn't re-trigger the playlist and force it to start over, which is exactly what we want it to do. Now the next thing we can look at is our stage screens. So here we can click on our stage icon, we can see all of our different stage screens, and we can see exactly which layer is active on each screen and we can click on that layout and we can see all the other layouts we have available and we can click to edit and add new layouts here um, but we could change our layout simply by clicking on one of these plus we can also drag this layout out onto our slide so I'll drag this also to my welcome slide here and I actually want this to be my projector plus clocks layout which has a full screen preview of what my projector has on it plus a few clocks and so now when I click on this slide, it's going to again, start those audio files. It's gonna start up my announcement loop, but you'll see that it's changed my layout. So if I go over and preview my stage display layout, you'll see that we get that full screen preview. Plus we have a few clocks here that we can see. Now the other thing that we can control here is we can actually send messages to our stage screens. Now the, if this is something that you haven't done before, you have to have a text box that's linked to a stage message. So let me show you how to do that. So we're gonna go up to more and go to our stage editor. And we're gonna go to just this music layout and I'm gonna add a new object to the slide. So I'm gonna click on my add object and I'm gonna choose stage message. And this is gonna add a new text object with linked text to our stage message. So you can manually build that, but the easy way to do that is simply by adding that object. Now I'm gonna move this down to the bottom of the screen here and I'm gonna just have this take up this whole area where my next slide text is but it's going to be on top of all of this so that if we send a message it takes up this whole area but doesn't cover up our current slide text um, now we have an option that we can flash a color when this is shown so you could do that but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the fill of this to be like a dark red color and I'm also gonna go back to my text properties and I wanna set the size of this to be really large text. So I'm gonna say scale text up to fit container. So it's gonna be as large as it possibly can be. Now we do have a problem. Right now, this message, this red box would be on the screen all the time. And we only want it to show up when there's text being shown in that stage message. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our shape settings and we'll choose visibility. And here we can say when the slide object of stage message, so when this object has text, show that object. If it doesn't have text, don't show that object. So now that we have this created, let's see how this works. So let's go back to show and we need to change the layout on our stage uh, display to be uh, that layout. So we're gonna go to music and just click on that. That'll change our layout here. And now we can send a message. So we'll send the message of hello and we'll click on show. And you'll see that it's a giant red message that says hello. And when we hit hide, it's going to make that disappear exactly the way we want it to. So that's how you can utilize those stage messages. The next thing that we have here is our timers. So you can uh, add 
new timers, but you can also control them. So let's say we wanted to start our segment clock. We could do that right here, and it's gonna just start counting up on that clock. Now, if this was set to overrun, it would turn to a red color to give us some feedback, some visual feedback that our clock has overrun. So this is an easy place to be able to trigger our clocks. And again, we could drag and drop this clock onto a slide if we wanted to, to start that segment clock. And if you want to rearrange your clocks, you can do that here as well. And you can click on this little carrot here to uh, adjust this clock. So we can say allow overrun. We can say which type of uh, timer this is. Is this a countdown timer, a countdown to time, a, or an elapsed timer? So you can edit all of that information right there. The next one that we have is our messages. So here we can um, send our different messages. If you want to edit all of the details and change which uh, theme is being used. If this uh, has web notifications, you can do that there. You can change your transition. All of that information is there. And then finally, we have our props. So here we can uh, trigger our different props. So let's say we're in the middle of our teaching and we have our teaching notes up and we wanna show those and we're on our main output so we can see what that looks like. And uh, let's say we needed to trigger a prop. So we wanted to trigger this lower third of my name. I can trigger that right from here while still being able to easily trigger and control my presentation. And I can just click it again to take that prop off whenever I want. Now, if you wanna add or edit your props, you can just click here to add a new prop or you can click on the edit button to bring yourself to the prop editor. Also in 7.5, you can now send your message and prop content out onto separate screens utilizing looks. And there's some new features in looks that make it easier for you to create and customize your looks. So if we go to screens and edit looks, you'll see that our message and prop content is now on separate layers and we can choose which screen it's being shown on. Plus we can take our looks and reorder them so we can change the order of them and move them around. And if you like a look that you've previously designed but you just wanna make a slight adjustment to it, so you want to maybe enable a different layer or change an alternate theme, all we need to do is right click on it and we can duplicate that. So we can easily duplicate that and now we can go in here and maybe choose a different theme. So we want this to be our black bar one so we can easily adjust and change those and customize those without having to rebuild that alternate look from scratch, which is really, really helpful. Now, not only do we have great new ways to control the show in 7.5, we also have new editing features. Now, the teaching notes we're currently looking at are utilizing the awesome new vivid dark theme that comes with 7.5. And you can see there's a lot of different options in here that you can utilize. And a lot of these are using the brand new New gradient text fill option. So we can actually fill our text with a gradient instead of a solid color. So let's see how we would do that. So let's go to the editor and you'll see that this text box that I have selected is using a gradient fill instead of a text color. So you can just choose that option there and then you can choose what the fill is and the angle. Now you do have an option for uh, to use the object bounds and this is just saying do you want to draw the gradient from the edge of the text to the other edge of the text or or do you wanna draw the gradient from the edge of the text box to the other edge of the text box? So if I deselect this, you'll see our gradient is a little smaller and tighter. And if I open this up, the text box or the gradient will be uh, from the edge of the text box. Now, another option that we have is for a text highlight. So if I highlight this word, you can see that uh, I kind of want it to highlight kind of like it is right now. And so if we click on this gear icon, we can set a text background to set a highlight for that one word. So I can go in here and I can choose a color. And now that one word is going to have a highlight just behind that one word, which is a really great look to help bring emphasis to different words. Another way we can bring emphasis is with an underline. And so if I select this and I add an underline, uh, it's gonna use kind of this first color from my gradient fill. But what if I wanted that to be a different color? Well, I can do that as well. So I can go in here and I can say, use a custom underline. So I can choose that. And now I can go in and say, I kind of want this to be like a dark gray underline underneath that text. And you can do that. So now it's a totally different underline underneath some gradient text and 
we have this kind of uh, custom text background to bring a highlight to some of our text. So those are some great new editing options that you have available and a new theme to show off all of those different options. Now, the last thing is audio. In version 7.5, we have new controls on how audio should behave based on what media is playing. So let's take a look at how this works. So if we go to Pro Presenter and to Preferences and under Advanced, you'll find our new playback behavior for any media that's on our presentation and announcements layer and how it interacts with audio in our audio bin. So if we have media showing and audio playing, what should it do? So currently I have it set that audio is going to ignore any me any foreground media. So if I have any audio playing and there's foreground media being shown at the same time, it's just going to ignore it and continue playing the audio. But we could change this and say that if any media of any type is being shown, then clear out the audio or only clear out the audio if the media has audio. So if we would choose this one um, and play back all of this content, you'll see that our audio continues to play. But if I would go in and maybe add in a video clip into my announcement loop here. So I'll add this to my second slide here. So this media has audio. And so when I click on this slide, you'll see it continues to play. But as soon as it goes to this slide, it's going to clear out that other audio and start my new audio for my bumper video. So it stopped any audio on the audio playback layer and is only playing audio on the presentation layer. Now, one other option that we have, if we go back into our audio preferences and go to advanced, is we can actually tell it to pause. And so instead of just clearing it out, we can pause and resume it, which is really, really cool. So for this video, let's pretend that we have an announcement loop with an announcement video in it that we want to show, but we also want our audio playlist to happen. So what we'll do here is we'll say audio layer pauses and resumes if media has audio. So if I have a video that has audio, it's going to pause whatever playback is happening. So let's watch this happen. So I'm going to click on this slide. It's going to start this audio playing back. If we go look at our playback controls, you'll see that's playing. Now, as soon as that video started, you'll see that the audio playback paused. And if we go to our presentation layer, you'll see that that's playing. We got our audio playing. And as soon as that's done, we can watch our audio playback. And as soon as that's done, it's going to wait five seconds at the end because of the five second timer. And then after that, it's going to continue. And now my audio continues playing back. So that's a really, really helpful way for us to be able to insert into our announcement loops video clips that we want to show and have audio playing and have it all be automated so you don't have to remember to stop it or start it. It just kind of all works exactly the way you want. So those new controls are really, really helpful. So those are the new features in version 7.5 of ProPresenter. There's some awesome new stuff in there for creation and control of your your presentation so that you can present like a pro.